Ants are crazy. They are capable of constructing the most complex structures besides our own and have been breaking down dead things, farming fungus and bugs, and rampaging through forests since the Cretaceous period. They split off from the wasps and diversified into tens of thousands of species of extremely bizarre forms. The soldier cast of many ants are the ones with the big guns, huge heads with massive muscles to power their hatchet-like jaws. However, there are some species whose soldier cast take the jaw mechanism to the extreme. One such jawsome expert has a heart-shaped head, huge powerful jaws, three pairs of spines, and moves ploddingly through the canopies of the Amazon. This gal right here is the arboreal trapjaw ant, one of only two species within the genus Daciton. Trapjaw ants aren't a natural grouping of buggos. There are a bunch of unrelated ants that have evolved huge mandibles that they neutrally lock with biological ratchet joints. They have little hairs that act as tripwires. Once a whisker is tripped, the muscles release and the jaws snap shut on whatever tripped the wire. Any assortment of teeth then plunge themselves into the chitin of whatever prey item they snagged. Some ants have elongated their jaws, while others have elongated their heads to make room for more muscle to power slightly shorter jaws. This makes these ants look like bobbleheads, maybe not as much as the massive-headed but short-jawed soldiers of some ants or even termites, but still big-ass noggins. The genus Daciton contains two species of bizarre arboreal ants with large trap jaws. These gals were originally described as species of the Formica genus back in 1802 by French zoologist Pierre-André Latriel. Seems like there were a bunch of ant genera that acted as waste baskets for a ton of species that would be split once DNA sequencing became a thing. First time. <laughs> 30 years after the species was first described, it was placed within a new genus, Dacetone. So it didn't actually take DNA sequencing to see that these heart-headed beasts were a new genus. Fancy that. The only species, Dacetone armigarum, was joined by another species in 2008, Dacetone boltoni. These guys are a little wacky. They have a generally normal ant thorax that squeezes into an ultra-pinched connection to the abdomen, which is called the petiole. Then you have the relatively normal abdomen that ends in a stinger connected to the poison glands, which contain a mixture of chemicals belonging to the pyrazine group. As far as I've found, workers tend to be the ones to sting prey. I'm betting that the soldier cast has stingers and can sting as well, but may prefer to use their massive heads and jaws to dispatch prey. These gals have at least three pairs of spines on the thorax and petiole that stick out laterally. The first pair are more forward projecting, the second pair is more up and out, and the last pair is bent backwards. From there, we have the six limbs that begin with some massively muscled femori. Some individuals of the colony have more prominent spines on their legs than others. Of course, now we come to the best part, the head. The head, in all casts, is roughly cartoon heart-shaped. It has two giant lobes that bend backwards against the thorax. These are the bits that house the massive muscles and ligaments needed to power the equally massive jaws. The big black eyes are laterally oriented and spread far apart. The antennae are usually held in a 90 degree angle and aren't particularly of note. The jaws stick out and up when closed and have a series of hairs on the inside edge. Their jaws are shaped like a crowbar with a huge major prong and one or two smaller teeth. They are transparent brownish orange in color, but their exoskeleton is see-through enough to be able to view the muscles through it under certain light conditions. They shimmer like gold when they move, giving a weird uncanny valley feeling as though they may be computer-generated models rather than real-world mini-beasts. They grow up to 17.8 millimeters in length, but often vary between the different casts. These ants are polymorphic, which means that they have different shapes and body parts across casts, as well as within each cast. Despite this, I haven't been able to find images of these ants that show dramatic differences like you see in other ants. 
The soldiers are larger and more robust than the workers or foragers, while the queen is the biggest, but all still have a heart-shaped head and large trapped jaws. All are pretty much the same color. The differences are in size, function, and in minute characteristics, like spines, tubercles, petioles, and more. Now, the males do differ quite dramatically from all other castes. That's not particularly unusual for ants. The males, or kings, are much darker and opaque with a mostly black to dark brown color. The petiole is not as thin as in the workers, and of course they're missing the trap jaws. They only need to mate, not to eat. To help them mate and make new colonies, they have wings, like young queens. The arboreal trapjaw ant is, like its name suggests, an accomplished tree climber. They live almost exclusively in the canopies of Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, French Guiana, Guyana, Peru, Suriname, Trinidad, and Venezuela, so basically all the forested parts of the Amazon. They are so adapted to the canopy that if they fall, workers will glide to safety, hence their other common name, the gliding trapjaw ant. These gals usually nest in the branches and trunks of trees that have been thoroughly excavated by nature's bulldozers, the beetles. Though they usually live in the trees, they are often collected from places outside of this specific habitat, like in swamps, open forests, and savanna environments. The arboreal gliding trapjaw ant is what is called polygynic and polydomous. Polygynic being a colony of ants that has multiple queens producing young, rather than just one. Polydomous refers to ants that have multiple nests. So, multiple queens making babies in multiple nests that act as a whole colony. As such, they can number into the 900,000s. The workers will often shelter in small chambers that are placed near the end of branches of the host tree, like barracks. In order to mark where the ants have been, they use the same chemicals in their abdomen that they use in their stinger. They will splooge all over their trail, and the scent will remain for seven days or more. Despite their ability to pick up scents, these ants are primarily driven by sight. Thus, big old eye. as a sight-based species, they are active almost exclusively during the day. They will move about at night sometimes, but stick close to their trails so they don't get lost. Thanks to their coordination, massive colony size, group hunting, short-range recruitment, stingers, and massive jaws, these ants are capable of taking down enormous prey. They've been observed tearing apart other mini-beasts up to 90 times the weight of a worker. Here you see the result of a butterfly's unfortunate mistake. It got its head cracked by a clever soldier. Despite their prowess, they are very slow in plotting. I mean, look at these guys. So slow, so methodical. I like them. Since ants are enterprising little beasts, they rarely specialize in only one food item. As such, even though these arboreal trapjaw ants have massive trap jaws for killing massive animals, they will also tend to cattle bugs. They will protect and eat the sugary sweet nectar emissions of scale bugs, mealybugs, and leafhoppers when they encounter them. It's rarely reported, but probably happens more often than just rarely, since these gals live in the canopies and are hard to observe. Despite their huge colony sizes, these ants are not particularly menaces to the greater forest ecology. They are most aggressive to other species of ants. They hate, they absolutely hate, the Dolichoderis bispinosus species of ant, and won't share their canopy habitats with them. They also despise the plant ants and compete with them on many occasions. There are other arboreal ants that the arboreal gliding trapjaw ants share their space with, but not without complications. The workers frequently clamp down on cocktail ants as they use their trails and will steal their prey out from under them. The smaller cocktail ants never usually get caught by the trap jaws and run off before any action takes place, kinda like miniature tree pirates. And that's about it, an interesting species of ant. 
Apparently, they aren't great to keep in captivity, as they are expensive to export and relatively fragile compared to other ant species. But I have seen some YouTube videos of people's colonies, and they seem to do okay, so whatever. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubbinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.